Good morning to Gary Griffith. What's happening? Long time. Yeah, hi. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. Good morning, morning, Mr. Griffith. How are you? Oh, fine. Thank you. Good morning. Well, I see you at a nice carnival. <laughs> yeah. I see all the heel outs he got from DJs as they were passing. Yeah. He probably can't get 10% of that. <laughs> God, he starts. Oh, Lord, he starts. He starts. Oh, he starts. He starts. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I, did, no, I don't think Dr. Oli came out at all for the carnival because he was he's been diagnosed COVID. Yeah, he had COVID for the 23rd time, yeah. Mm. <laughs> so, Gary, of course, we're dealing with this human trafficking story that has now mushroomed once again because it, it came up before. Eh? Um, I just don't have the details or the articles in front of me, but it has, it has come up again based on a question that Rodney Charles asked of the prime minister in terms of investigating um, senior government officials. Devant Maraj has since responded that it was actually government officials of the then government, People's Partnership government, and that an investigation was taking place or, or, or something of the sort. Um, what can you say? Being a part of, you were, you were an advisor under the People's Partnership, and national security. You are Minister of National Security under the People's Partnership, and you've been a Commissioner of Police under the PNM. What are you? What What are your thoughts on this? For uh, sure. Um. Good morning again, Trinidad and Tobago. I think it is very embarrassing. It's not disgusting that we have politicians spending most of their time dealing with a very sensitive and serious matter of national security, pointing fingers. This is not the way to deal with such a situation. So going to the actual point um that you're speaking about. As the Minister of National Security at the time under the People's Partnership, at no time did we have any information to verify that anyone that was holding any official office in the People's Partnership was involved in human trafficking. We have to be very careful as we put into the words human trafficking. That has to do with a deliberate situation of someone being um, there. They're, um, they're being held against their will or they're being used in some way for exploitation, whether it is sexual or based on labor. And on, on most occasions in Trinidad and Tobago, that aspect of human trafficking from a sexual nature has to do with persons who may be brought into the country. They may be held against their will. They may be lured or, or told that if it is that you don't do what we tell you, then you're going to, we're going to report you to the authorities. It is a very serious matter in this country to the point where if you recall, I actually released 63 persons who were held in cages, and that was a degree of trafficking. And the media spent more time trying to ascertain if that was trafficking, because we believe that human trafficking only has to do with sexual exploitation. It has to do also with labor. It can be involved in, a, in elderly persons signing checks and giving it to, 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 to um, their family members. So all of that has to do with, sex, with human trafficking. In the situation as it pertains to the People's Partnership, as the Minister of National Security, at no time any such information came to my desk. I also find it very um, amusing, if not um, sad, that we will state that an investigation was launched by civilians. I can't believe that the People's Partnership was doing exactly what the PNM loved to do. Keith Rowley loves to investigate. You as a politician cannot appoint people to investigate matters of possible criminal activity. This is not a dictatorial country where you can appoint the Stanley Johns and the Audit Committee and the Barrington and, and, and all of these people. You handpick people and you do your own investigation. Then you will get results that will be to your benefit. In this situation, here in Devon, Marat say that an investigation was launched. How could there be an investigation launched pertaining to possible criminal activities and the Minister of National Security was never involved? So I would so I, so I don't know what investigation. If there's, if there's a matter of concern of criminal activity, Unlike the PNM, who don't know better whether you were supposed to send that to the police and not handpick people and pay them big money in the hope that they will give you the results that you will want to try to smear their name, what you do is send it to the police. So having said that, I, I can confirm that there was never any report that came to me as a minister as it pertained to human trafficking. Have, having said that, however, there's a difference with human trafficking to uh, someone who may be involved in say, if you want to call the word, quote-unquote, pimping, if you want to use um, escort service along that line. I am not going to go in-depth into that because as the Minister of National Security, if information comes to my desk, similar, similar to the Commissioner of Police, I have to be very careful what information I could bring out to the public. So there may have been uh, some degree of information that would have come to me as it pertains to certain individuals who may have been involved in 
escort service or prostitution or whatever, that also is a criminal offense. But it is very difficult to pinpoint, again, when it comes to intelligence, to evidence. And even with myself as commissioner of police, on several occasions, I led operations because one of the main reasons I've been involved in law enforcement is trying to protect those people who need protection. And when we make these raids with prostitution, and sometimes you have young girls, or what you're going to hear immediately is the men say, well, I was just here, I was just at the wrong place at the wrong time in this club. The girls will not want to, to give evidence because they are afraid that they will be sent back to their home country. So this concept of human trafficking is a very sensitive matter. We do not get much support because many persons are fearful. Um, and, and what is very unfortunate, as I said, going back to how I started, the biggest problem is that instead of Keith Rowley trying to deal with the problem, when I was Minister of National Security, it was the first time in a very long time. Let me explain how this is done. You, um, when you're graded under the US, you have tier one, then you have tier two, you have tier two watch list, and then you have tier three. I was able to implement the child protection unit, the establishment of the counter trafficking unit, get persons charged, deal with the NGOs, start put a lot of situations that assist in the prosecution. And because of that, we were commended during that period so that we were upgraded from tier two watch list to tier two. On my departure, just as what um, G Mr. Jacob did as when he, when he replaced me as commissioner of police, um, the PNM government dismantled and shut down most of the things I put in place that caused us to be upgraded. So three ministers of national security, eight years later, all the work that I put in place to get Trinidad and Tobago upgraded from tier two watch list to tier two, we have been downgraded. So instead of pointing fingers at, at, the, at the opposition, which Keith Rowley loves to do to try to cover for his incompetence, what they should be doing is taking a page out of what I did in 2013 to 2015 to deal with this serious problem of human trafficking. Yeah, but Gary, it wasn't Dr. Rowley who raised this issue. You know? It was, in fact, Rodney Charles who asked a question in the parliament where this issue came up again. You know? Dr. Rowley didn't I, I, raise I, I, this issue. Yeah, yeah and, and, and he had a right to explain and clarify, but that's my point. That the, the politicians pointing fingers at this is your person involved. No, it's your person involved. This is unbelievable. We have big hardback persons that have sworn an oath in office in parliament and spending more time trying to point fingers as to who is a pimp and who is involved in human trafficking than dealing with a very serious problem we have in this country. As I said, I have... I have been in so many raids as commissioner of police. And when, when you see these young girls mm -hmm. and they are minors and you know what is happening, you arrest all the men who are there. The men will then obviously say, oh, no, I was just by the bar, I was just by the pool. The girls are afraid to say anything because they are afraid of being of, of retaliation and they do not want to get back to their home country. This situation with human trafficking is a very serious situation. I put a lot of work to get us upgraded. And to see, and it's just as a commissioner of police, to see all the hard work you do to help the country. And then because of petty politics, if not incompetence, because we had three ministers of national security under this government and they have failed to continue to hold the battle of what I did. And we could have very well been in tier one if they had continued the process. But we spend more time defending ourselves to say, well, nobody on my, on my side of defense is involved in human trafficking. No, it's your people on your side involved. That does not help the country. It does not help in any way. And I think this year is an embarrassment to Trinidad and Tobago, what we are seeing on the front pages over the last few days. Mm -hmm. So you don't think this is worth the time then, this, this issue of, of human trafficking? You, you totally missed every single thing I just said. No, no, it's a, question, it's a question I'm asking again, Gary, in light of all that's happening. No, in light, in light of, of all, as I said, if you look, Wendell, as of what I spoke about, it's we should be spending our time in trying to deal with the proper systems to improve Trinidad and Tobago to prevent us from being involved in human trafficking, which is what I did in that two year period as a minister, establishment of a child protection unit, strengthening the counter trafficking unit, documentation of statements for um, foreign victims, granting of temporary immigration relief to victims, partnering with NGOs, um, funding NGOs, investigating 20, um, over 20 odd human trafficking cases, charging persons, charges being laid for the first time on a number of suspected offenders, under the TIP Act of 2011. That is my point. We have to be proactive to get the job done to put an end to human trafficking in Trinidad and Tobago, rather than politicians spending time pointing fingers, accusing each other of being involved in human trafficking. That is, is totally irrele irrelevant in the scheme of things where we have thousands of young minors out there being used and abused through sexual exploitation. And instead we, have, we are playing politics in parliament. That is my point. If they took a page of what I did, deal with the issue, deal with the problem, 
serve the country properly rather than pointing fingers. That is my point. Well, if well, if the pointing fingers have some sort of basis in that, in that is a, it, it could be on either side of the government bench, yeah. is not worth an investigation and bringing that person to, to justice. And I, I would have sent an article that was in the newspapers in July of 2020, where a certain candidate, a certain candidate um, for, for Cuba North was asked pointed questions concerning this. Um, don't and the person is now sitting in the parliament. Don't you think that's worth pursuing? Well, uh, again, no, you're, you're not going to deny that. Um, as the Minister of National Security, I did my job. Um, information will come to, to my attention. It may not be, it may not be illegal, but there's a difference with Ill, um, illegality and being unethical. And I will, I will do my job by passing it on to the relevant officials, whether it be the police or whether it be the Prime Minister. But as again. There at no time did we, did we ever receive any reports of human trafficking. Uh, if it is someone is using um, state transportation to escort persons uh, to bachelor parties or whatever, it is unethical. And you're not going to use state, you shouldn't be using state resources. But at no time was there ever any report of human trafficking. We have to be very careful of the words human trafficking. When you make this act, you know, just the reason, just as you just did, Wendell, nobody could call a name because we love to smear persons' names and, and make accusations without evidence and facts. And this is what mm. I do. So if I get information that somebody is involved in an unethical practice, which I feel may be inappropriate, I will know as myself, as a political leader, I am not going to have somebody like that be a member of parliament or someone who will high office. I can speak for myself. I can't speak for other persons. But well, I'm not well, going to... Well, isn't prostitution against the law in Trinidad and Tobago? Correct, correct. And that is where it is mm. what you do is that you will send it to the police for the police to investigate and verify if it is true. And it goes back to my point of how- So would you have had reports, would you have had reports of people um, engaged in prostitution? Yes. You would have had reports like that. Would they investigate it? Yeah, but what you do is that, again, information will come as a Minister of National Security, we don't investigate. So that's why that goes back to my point. You, you as politicians cannot be involved in investigation. All you could do is receive information and you get updates from whether it is the special branch, the SSC, or the other arms of intelligence in the protective services. And then mm -hmm. you'll also get hearsay, rumor, and, and rum shop talk. What you do as a minister is to, you don't go and be part of an investigation. You don't PNM anything thing that you feel that you could investigate and then write a report and then say, oh, look, we, we, we can't be email gating all the time, or the Stanley John in all the time, or the Barrington in all the time, or the auditing. All the time we can't but, be doing that. But, but Gary, you would have been fortunate to sit in, in, in both positions as a minister where you didn't have that power to investigate but pass on the information, but you would also have sat as a commissioner of police in the three years. So are you saying that as the commissioner of police, you would not have received any of those reports? No, and even not whatsoever. If you didn't, uh, again, remember you didn't, the, you didn't? The, accusation, the accusations of this may have may have would have taken place probably 2010, 2015. In 2018, mm -hmm. as the commissioner of police, there was absolutely no evidence for us to move forward on such a matter, none whatsoever. Because really and truly, if someone committed an act like this, contracts would be, could very well be covered. I'm not saying that it is, but tracks, so there was nothing that came to my desk as the commissioner of police in 2018, when I took over, to show that we have enough evidence, we have witnesses, we have documentation, we have video footage that can assist us to move forward to have someone arrested for prostitution. And, and that is the point. But again, going back, I cannot put my head on a block also to say that this was the person was not involved in human trafficking because we do not have the, the names of the females. We do not have the names of the persons who they, um, they were serving. We do not have anything. So the persons may very well be minors. They may very well have been illegal immigrants. I do not know. And that's why my point is, is that I'm hearing Mr. Maraj confirming that there was human trafficking. You can't confirm that because if you can't confirm that, if anybody made such a statement, I, as the commissioner of police, would have immediately contacted you. Well, sir, you have now confirmed that you know for a fact that a crime was committed. We would like to get the evidence so we can move forward to prosecute these persons. That is the point. So you can't say we know for a fact that there was human trafficking. There may very well be. What I am stating is that I had no substantial evidence to verify that. What we had was intelligence to ascertain that there was some degree of unethical behavior that was taking place by certain individuals. Mm. But 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 during your tenure, even though you, even though there was no human trafficking emanating from senior government officials or any proof of that from either party, 
there was still some level of human trafficking period occurring in the country that would have come to your desk though. Yeah, well, Richard, as, as I said, um, it was the last time when it is, um, when I was Minister of National Security, we were commended by the US for our performance by making sure that we were upgraded from human trafficking watch list tier two to tier um to tier two. So it's like we... a B a B minus to a B. And the reason, yeah, yeah. the reason for that was because of the numerous things that I put in place. So I wasn't there spending time pointing fingers in parliament like a child. I was I, I established the child protection unit. I did the strengthening of the counter trafficking unit. We were able to charge persons. We, I reignited the security cooperation agreement between Trinidad and Tobago and Venezuela and Colombia to assist us. We, we drive, drafted the plan for a national awareness campaign in partnership with NGOs, provision of multiple specialized anti-trafficking training sessions. All of these things are critical for the U.S. to upgrade you or downgrade you. So that is the point. The only time we saw Trinidad being pro, Trinidad and Tobago being proactive in dealing with human trafficking was in that period. And it's not a it's not about blowing trumpet. It's about good God, you get in a position, get the job done. Don't be spending your time trying to do it, trying to find ways to, to, to discredit and demonize your political opponents. Just get the job done. And it wasn't just that alone. In that same period, the UK government, based on the same concern, after, I don't know if um, people are aware, but we were going to have visas imposed on Trinidad and Tobago citizens going to the United Kingdom. It was a done deal. There were seven countries at the time. I pleaded with the UK. And they said, because of the problems we are getting with human trafficking, with drugs entering Gatwick Airport, they are going to ensure that visas are imposed on Trinidad and Tobago. I was given 10 specific um, policies that I had to deal with in six months, or the visa would have been imposed on January 1st, 2015. And that included putting K9, you know, in situations for proper searching and scanning. And thankfully, I was able to get the approval, and, they, and we were the only country that did not have that visa imposed. Those are the types of things that you need politicians to do. Go out there and just do what is required to help the citizens of this country, rather than spending most of your time trying to find audits and Stanley joining and email gating. It is childish, it is pathetic, and it is not serving the people of this country. Did, did, <laughs> did, we, did we maintain the status in terms of what you said that we improved in terms of the human trafficking? No, Are we still at that level? Has it improved? Has it downgraded? As soon as I left, because of the failure of the PNM government from Eddie Dillon, Stuart Young, and Fitzgerald Hines, they, we, we were downgraded as soon as I left. And that is the point I'm trying to state. We got there. I, I, I'm fed up of being in a position, getting the job done. And as soon as I leave, because of petty politics, many of those things I just mentioned that I put in place were not enforced and it didn't continue. So, so Eddie Dillon and company, they dropped the battle. And immediately after I left, instead of continuing the patterns of the policies and the operational plans that I put in place as the Minister of National Security that ensured that we were upgraded from tier two watch list to tier two, there's like a B minus to a B, immediately we were downgraded yet again back to tier two watch list. And we have been there since for the longest while. And you have three ministers of national security and eight years later, all they continue to do is to point fingers at the opposition and then try to state, well, we need more, um, as, as Keith Rowley said, we need more prosecution. That is not true. If you look at what I just mentioned, there were a number of initiatives I put in place, much more than just increased prosecution. And that, and because of that, that is what causes us to be upgraded. And, uh, and that, if it is that they spend more time looking at every single thing that is required by the US, we will be upgraded. The same way I was, we were upgraded based on what I did then. The same way that the UK visas were not imposed because of what the UK demanded from us. That is what we need to do. If we do not do the things that are required by our foreign allies, we are going to be downgraded. We are going to get visas imposed on us because of poor um, politics, because of incompetence by those who hold such office. Gary, I would have just sent you and the other guys a video of former member of parliament, Ramona Ramgal, in the parliament saying that she reported to the police, this is in July 2020, she would have been in Parliament saying that she reported to the police about three brothels that were operating in her area, in her area, that which is the area of Cuba North, I think she was the MP4, right? Yes. Have a look at it and, and tell me if you remember anything of that sort, because that would have also been during the time that you would have been commissioner of police. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Um. I pushed heavily to try to put an end to all of these with all these brothels. 
And it was mm -hmm. very difficult because uh, we had, again, remember when David West made the, made the comment about um, some of the biggest gangs who were, were the police service. My, my, one of the main reasons why- You didn't I like it, but I had, I had agreed with him. Eh? But you, I know you didn't <laughs> like it. I didn't like it, but but there are serious rogue elements within the police service. As I said, when I when I when I cut down two hundred and forty million per annum in overtime corruption, when I found out police officers were in stations holding back firearms and blackmailing persons, there was also the situation of police officers controlling drug blocks, and um, that's why I started polygraphing them. At the point I'm being is that there was also this situation with police officers in certain areas trying to protect these brothels because they were making big money and they were actually acting as a as a, a security avenue to prevent it from taking place. So every time I spoke about, let us raid this place, let us raid that place, Ramona Ramdial, oh my God, she was very instrumental. Uh, she bombarded, she bled my ears constantly to put an end to it. And it's not just because of the prostitution, it was causing drugs to be sold on the, on the areas, um, littering, fights were taking place. It was a mess in those areas and she rightfully so contacted me, she gave me good information. And every time I made the, the um, I send the information to have these places raided, I would be told conveniently by certain officers, well, so when we went there, there was nothing. Because what they were doing was actually tipping off the individuals. What I started doing then was started putting undercover officers and using the special operation response team, the team that Mr. Jacob immediately shut down because of one incident. But you have noticed over 50 other persons have been killed at the hands of police officers but those units have not been shut down. So you realize the problems we have in the police service. When it is when I put that unit of sort to start raiding these places, that is where we, was, we started to get through. And then charges were being lead. But one of the main things that I was doing to put an end to these brothels was to ensure that their bar licenses will not be renewed. And that was the main avenue. So sometimes if you find ways, because when you go into these, um, these brothels, the men will automatically say, I was just having a drink. The girls will say, no, even though I'm I'm clad like this, um, I'm just having a line. It is very difficult to pinpoint and charge persons for prostitution unless you use undercover officers. And sometimes they may come and state that um, based on, um, they, 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 it's very difficult. Going back to that then, what we started doing was putting a request to the courts to prevent the bar licenses from being re renewed. If the bar license is not renewed, well, that means the place will close down. So that was the avenue I was using because we have over 70 odd places where we have pinpointed involving prostitution. The majority are in the South, the Southwest and in Central. There are also a few in, um, in the Western Peninsula, very few, but the majority were there. So I was pushing heavily to ensure that the bar licenses will not be renewed and using specific police officers to go to court to give all the information, especially and including what Ramona Ramdial brought to my attention. I, I started asking members of parliament to submit a document with signatures from persons in their constituency demanding that these places be closed because of the reports and the activities that would be taking place. And those are the, sometimes you have to find a, a way to, to win the battle because if you go the straight and hard way, just read any places, very little to come out. And then they will be they will be reopened the very next day. Mm. But Gary, I mean, I mean, just to segue a little bit to the murder rate, we're now at over a, a, a hundred plus, I think. I don't know if we've crossed a hundred, but yes, we're certainly yes. at a hundred. In, in the first two months of 2023, which, which statistically, if you do your math, um, can take us to the level of 600 plus at the end of 2023, if we keep up at this rate, um, what's your thinking in terms of uh, um, what's not happening or what's go going wrong that our murder rate is spiking to this level? Well, again, uh, it, it, was, it, it went right back to what we started. What was what caused us to start improving our our performance in dealing with human trafficking? After the person left, they pulled the plug and everything was dismantled. What is causing this situation? My last year as commissioner of police, there were three hundred forty-two murders in that last full year. Now we're going to almost two times the amount, and and it shows the difference. I mean, if we could even go to Carnival, it is um if it is you don't accept that there's a problem, you're not going to solve the problem. Your data here that you said it was a safe carnival. We had over nine murders, stabbings, rapes, woundings, shootings, incidents galore. Even a tourist was shot. Compare that to Carnival 2020, not one violent crime. That was the safest carnival ever. We had over 99% police attendance. And now we're trying to pad figures. I have the reports to show that there were a number of police officers that did not turn up for duty, whether it is because of lack of morale and motivation or because of the 4%. 
but don't try to mislead the country to you know just they are very quiet to state the, the attendance of police officers in 2020 there were two police officers at every single corner it was the safest carnival ever and not and this year now you're trying to say, oh it was everything was safe you can't be misleading the country the same way as it pertains to the murders we had the systems over 100 policies to put things in place to provide the deterrent to ensure there's a reason why public trust and confidence in the police was 55 percent up until august 2021 and now it has dipped. it is not because it's the same officers it is because of leadership lack of proactivity and pulling the plug on all the things we put in place to provide the deterrent and to ensure that criminal elements will be aware that listen the product of opportunity is no longer there all i am saying and i will continue to say the things that worked in 2021 it is there it, it was there to be seen and they have refused to do it unfortunately the police service commission is so politicized that they will see someone and again I, um Ula christopher did nothing wrong let us not blame Ula christopher so if someone plays 19th in an exam based on on um examining by a top qualified uk specialist in kpm through kpmg and now we have civilians somebody who's a, an accountant and another one who's a speaking consultant trying to, to trying to grade persons and that person comes first it shows the problem we have anytime you politicize law enforcement you are we are going to pay the price and this is what is happening right now i will humbly ask Ella christopher unlike do not jacob i jacob that is the situation look at what worked and that caused us to have 342 murders what caused us um, just a year and a half ago why is it that 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 crime became the number four concern be behind health safety and the economy what was working then and reignite it if that happens we can be back on track do, do you have a relationship with mrs christopher um mr griffith in terms of uh, a phone call or, or, or any kind of communication yeah well unlike um mcdonald jacob who was very childish and uh apart that, that decided to block i me. didn't ask you about mcdonald jacob no but sometimes you have to look at the person's character by measuring and comparing them with others i'm saying unlike jacob she uh, i do communicate with her um we have not reached that point where i could give her the type of advice sound advice to her sister in improving the moral and uh, motivation of the police service and to show the things that can be done to put back that fear into criminal elements. So hopefully she would adhere to my advice because it, it is there, it worked. And all we have to do is to just put plug it back in, reignite the 100 plus policies that McDonald Jacob shut down because of him politicizing the police service. If she does mm -hmm. that, I can assure the country you will see her turn around. All right, okay. So you do have a relationship with her, an open relationship? Yes, yeah, I do, yes. Okay, that's, 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 that's refreshing, don't know. Richard? Yeah. So, I mean, well, hopefully, um, 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 she, I, I don't know what, I, even though you have a relationship, I don't know how much you can give input into the situation because I know you've always said that crime is everybody's fight and you were willing to give your input if McDonald Jacob had asked for it. And so I don't know if that, because you have a different relationship with Ella Christopher, if that would be more forthcoming well well hopefully uh mcdonald jacob he was working to an obvious agenda uh, and, and the country has paid the price uh i have it, it remains to be seen whether she intends to be open to understand the things that took place i mean gentlemen look, just look at sort when you shut down sort that was just one of the hundred things that mcdonald jacob went out of his way to do and sort was instrumental in pegging back criminal elements sort was instrumental in dealing with human trafficking when we rescued you had 63 persons in cages, six foot by six foot, uh, and in um with in handcuffs, people and with, with tasers. And we had people in this country that attacked me for it. They had the audacity to say, How dare I got get involved in rescuing these people? That is how sick this country has become. So I have been involved in trying to fight for those people who need defending, whether it is elderly, whether it is children, whether it is women, whether it is animals, whether it is anybody. And if it is that we try to get the job done, we can make this a better country. This is the reason I got back into politics, to get it right. It is hope. I, I don't think the country could wait a year and a half until I'm in a position of authority to clean up this country and to transform the public service the same way I was able to transform the police service. So we, we, by the time I get there, it will be, it will be similar to it will be worse than what was happening in 2007 under the same PNM. So it is hope that Ulla Christopher will be open to take advice, guidance, and not have the police service. I mean, what McDonald Jacob did was, a, I mean, it was a dis embarrassment to the police service. Pulling the plug on all of the things that we've had in place 
that caused the massive turnaround. And that, when it, you saw it, you saw it up until August 2021, as I said, crime was the number four concern. Public trust and confidence in the police was 55%. It was the highest reduction in every violent crime in the history of Trinidad and Tobago. We moved from 342 murders to over 600 now in within 18 months. So from the highest reduction, we've gone to the highest spike. All she needs to do is to take the support and the advice that I'm willing to give her at no cost and all because I want it to succeed. Any citizen of Trinidad and Tobago that does not want the commissioner of police to succeed is, should be seen as an enemy of the state. Ola Christopher did not impose herself on in the country. She was appointed. Whether she was appointed based on all of the wrong reasons, that is irrelevant. The person who holds that position, we must give them full support. And if you don't, then you should be seen as an enemy of the state. I intend to give her the full support. If she does not adhere, if she does not step up to the plate, well, then she will then, the, well, I can't even say the police service commission will deal with it because look how they were appointed. But I am hoping that she will listen. She will take the advice so that at least it will give me some degree of foundation and platform when it is I'm put in a position in 2025 to clean up Trinidad and Tobago. Gary, how would you, how would you, had you been in a position of, of, of authority, whether as a minister or, or prime minister or commissioner, how would you have dealt with that Watson Duke and Kiesel Jackson um, situation? Um, that played out in the public with release of videos and accusations here, there and everywhere. Well, I mean, if, if if I'm a prime minister or minister of national security, uh, I don't think there's anything, uh, if my government or my political party is in government, what happens on other people at their back and all has nothing to do with me and um, as, a, as a minister or prime minister. What I can do is actually try to deal with the relevant ministry that deals with social development and advise persons that trying to stir air your dirty linen, trying to discredit people, trying to destroy people's credibility. That is not the way to go to develop a country, to develop a society. This country seems to be lacking proper leadership. And sometimes people, what we are seeing right now is that the persons who are supposed to be top leaders in this country, they are not stepping up because they are, they are disgusted by, by the bacchanal, the, 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 um, the, the, the gutter fight, the gutter rat fighting, People, and so the people that are coming up as possible candidates to be members of parliament, if not councillors, you're not getting the high quality. It is not what we would have seen in um, like 20, 25 years ago when you would have been seeing persons of ilk, the, the Jerry Yetming, the moving Assams, uh, persons that you, you'll say, listen, people, these people are, are the, the, looking for the best quality persons in the country that can deal with health, education, the economy, national security, the Brigadier Joseph Theodores, and so forth. You're not getting those persons stepping up. And because of that, we're getting poor service, poor delivery. I intend and hope that persons need to come back home, come back home, um, and, and, uh, not, not based on this song, but asking them to come here and let us get the best quality individuals in Trinidad and Tobago to fix this country. So what you're going back to the Duke and Kizel, you see the back, we love that. I, it was like a soap opera. I couldn't believe this became something more important to Trinidad and Tobago, watching and getting fun than trying to deal with the issues of Trinidad and Tobago. I ask all young women, understand when you see things like that, know how to check yourself, be very careful in relationships that you get in. To men, you have to also be very careful. This all this back and all this young and restless, aka in Trinidad and Tobago was not necessary. It does not, it, it does not inspire confidence for persons who hold high office to apply or for even for, for citizens to recognize and respect individuals. It does, it certainly wasn't, it's, these are things that cannot help in trying to ensure we can get the best persons available to come up and serve the country politically. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that hasn't changed, Gary, over the years is this issue of police being filmed, removing bodies from a crime scene. We saw that again over the weekend. I think I a murder in Mova, some situation in Mova where there was an alleged shootout between police and, 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 and guys. And there's a video of police removing a body from a crime scene. What Give me your thoughts on that. Right. No, that's a very technical situation because <clears throat> if at any time there's a, there's a firefight and the victim is now on the verge of death, it is the right of the police officer to do something as quickly as possible to ensure that that person can, can survive. You, have, you can't leave them on the ground for, um, for half an hour, 45 minutes to keep leaving body and, and the ambulance that is not coming. It is the role of the police officer to get that person 
um, sent immediately to uh, to um, for first aid. Evidence that the person is dead. The officers and they know they confirm the person is dead. The officer has no right to be holding them like if it's a uh, like like some dead carcass and just throw them, throw them in the back of a pickup. That is not how it is done. So only the police have that. So this is where the technicality comes in. The, the police could very well say, well, listen, the man was he, he thought he was still alive, so he was to send him immediately um, to, to a hospital. That is correct. That is the correct procedure. But if the way you hold them and the way they carry him, that certainly is not someone who is, who is on the good arrest. That seems to be a somebody who is dead. And when that person has died, then you're supposed to leave the body there until the, until the forensic um, authorities turn up and then take the body. It gets worse when I, I put a standard operational procedure that when that person now, when that body goes um, into the vehicle to be sent now um, <clears throat> to the relevant location, why do you have a police siren blazing, going 100 miles an hour, breaking speed limits, breaking traffic lights, putting people's lives at risk? What, you're, you're hoping to, to, um, to, to get the person back to life? I put a stop to that. That has now recommenced. It seems that certain officers love to turn on the siren. If the person has died, there's no reason for you to be turning on a blue light and a siren to be blazing going through to get um, into the back of Federation Park. Uh, again, but a more important point, Wendell, goes back to what may have caused it. I set a standard operational procedure to ensure that every single time a police officer is going to deliver a warrant that is going on an operation, that he comes out of his vehicle, you must turn on your body camera. We had enough body cameras in the stations. So I didn't have enough of the time issued for every officer, but to make sure that in every one of the, of the divisions, if I, you must know, the division commander must know if you're going to issue a warrant, if you're going in an operation, if you're going in a raid, if you're going in a volatile situation, if it is that you're coming out of your vehicle, you turn on your body camera. That, again, is one of the 100 plus things that McDonald Jacob stopped. So because of that, we would have seen the situation recently. That use of the body camera is not in any way to be seen solely to, to target police officers, but it is also to protect police officers when wrongfully accused by the lady in the towel who said police to wicked. So it is used both ways. It also would ensure that police officers would adhere to their role and responsibility and not abuse their authority, but it is also to protect police officers when wrongfully accused. That was, as, as I said, one of the 100 plus policies that McDonald Jacob shut down. And it is hoped that Ulla Christopher will reignite. I did bring that to her attention. I did tell her that these are one of the things you need to reignite thanks to the baseless, senseless activity of McDonald Jacob shutting it down. It plays a very big part towards building back public trust and confidence. I left it at 55%. It has probably gone back down to less than 12% when I took over. We need to build it back because that plays a critical part in reducing crime. Body camera is a curse word in the in the police service, regardless <laughs> of who is commissioner of police. It's a curse word. It's like it's, a, it's like an albatross around the neck. I don't know what it is. No, but Wendell, but my point is, what I started doing was showing the police officers this is not something to target you because on on more occasions you get police officers wrongfully accused than those who who abuse their authority. So it is of value to the police officer. Any police officer that does not want to turn on his body camera, it shows that you have an intention for criminal activity or or to abuse your authority. Any police officer, because this is to be used to protect you. I also put in the dashboard <laughs> cameras on the police vehicles to protect them as well. All of these things play a part. And you see what it ensures is transparency. And it allows the public to know that we are here to ensure that we will not abuse our authority. But in the same way, when that lady in the towel balling that all the police too wicked, we can now say, no, woman, you lied. That but Gary even, the, Gary, even the best of police officers, and you have some good ones, will go out of their way to protect themselves if need be. Even the well, best you know, and, ones. And, and that is where we also had through the IT system of some of the people at Jacob also fired, that if you turn off your camera, <clears throat> your disciplinary action will, will, will take place because we would have known that you turned off your camera at the time when you went on the patrol, when you went in that roadblock, when you went in to, to deliver the warrant. So you, you put systems to ensure that there, there will be disciplinary action taken because we will know when the camera comes back, we will know the amount of recording. These are the things that I put in place that the police service commission said, well, no, no we don't Gary Griffith, even though he got 20% more than everybody else in 2021. Ask the police commission why it is that they, that they didn't want somebody like that to lead the police service. Sometimes it, it, there, there are rogue elements, not just in the police service, but there are individuals external who had an agenda. And the country is now going to pay the price. And it is hoped that Ulla Christopher, in this position, will take my advice for us to transform not just Trinidad and Tobago police service, but Trinidad and Tobago. We, as I said, we can't turn this around. 
but we need to have that political will to stop politicizing the police service and do what is right. Hmm. All right. Well, I don't. I. I. Well, I don't know how that will go. Only time will tell. But well, twenty twenty five for sure. I had. A, I, 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 I. We had a lot of hope in you, um, Gary. But you know, um, I think at the end you just you just allowed yourself to be consumed by the mess that is the TTPS, and the <laughs> mess continues. It's gotten worse. Um, you know, I don't know. I we'll see how it goes, but. Uh, well, you know, time, time time flies. The same way you can look at that photo with Paul Richards. That looked like about 25 years ago. Yes. You, you, you never know. In, 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 in two years. You seen that too? Yeah, boy. <laughs> like Paul Richards when he was 15. In denial. Yeah. <laughs> He's also in denial. A part of him. In denial. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, All right. Gary, well, Gary thank you so much.